What's up, Internet? We are here testing out my Steam Deck because I am a stupid, 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 stupid person and spent a lot of money on a Steam Deck. But in my defense, it was the first time since it had launched that it was on sale. So I, I kind of figured this might be a way to make PC gaming slightly more accessible to me. Because, like, I've, I've got a computer. It's, it's right over there. But... I don't like having to use a computer. I'm not very good with a keyboard. My hands barely work. And I can't stream PC games terribly well. So this is also going to be a test of this because I figure if I can use a Steam Deck, connect it to my recording device like I would any console, that should free up some resources to allow handling of streaming better. Because, you know, you use a metric crap ton of RAM when you stream, just like running games and stuff. And I figure this might help it run a little bit better. And if we're going to test something, I, I just got to play Spark 2. That's just how things have to be, because it's like one of the best games I played last year. Um, now, I have to say I've already had some issues with this, because I have played a couple of games on my Steam Deck just to test them out, and uh, I'm using a Wii U Pro Controller right now, not because I just happen to have one handy, although I did. Hello, Mr. Cat. Uh, I'm, I'm using a Wii U Pro Controller because it's actually like the fourth controller I've gone through to try and get this to work with the Steam Deck. I, I tried with a DualShock 4 and that worked, except that it didn't seem to understand that my DualShock 4 had a R2. <laughs> for, for some reason it just didn't understand that it had two triggers. Um, so that made playing a couple of games rather challenging. But weirdly enough, only some of the games couldn't really recognize that I had an R2. I, I have no idea why. Uh, then I tried two separate Xbox One controllers. Neither of them could actually connect to the thing. But my Wii U Pro controller seems to work. And the only issue I have with this is that the actual triggers on it aren't triggers so much as they're buttons. It's not going to affect this game in any meaningful way, but down the line that could be problematic with like shooters or something. But at least we have something that works and and that's a starting point so let's let's start with that uh i've already beaten this game on the hardest difficulty let's set to normal i'm not sure how much this will play maybe all of it maybe not we'll see but uh hopefully hopefully we play a fair bit of this game because i do quite like spark the electric jester 2 it's one of the best games i played last year uh the entire trilogy was my game of the year and while I think that the second game in the series is better in terms of, like, just as a polished experience, I think this one is more mechanically interesting. So let's let's play this around. And uh, let's, let's learn about the story of Spark 2. See, there was a machine named Freon. He was kind of a dick. He, he released a virus. Uh, Fark was designed to defeat him. Had that job stolen from him, as you'll recall, because we've already streamed Spark 1. And uh, this kind of follows what happens after that with Best Boy Fark. Which is good, because I like Fark. He's awesome. But, uh, yeah. I hope you enjoy this shot of Spark. This is the only time in the game you will see him. Because <laughs> he's uh, not in this game. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Fark was designed to look exactly like Spark and rob him of his job. That was the entire plot of the last game, really. <laughs> but now, now we've got, um, well, system.anxiety. <laughs> yeah, so we've kind of got a bit of an existential crisis for a robot who has no purpose. And he's adorable, and I love him. And that's kind of where we're going. This, this kind of feels like the plot to Shadow the Hedgehog, but it's actually a good game. And it's probably the best Sonic game we've gotten in years. Which, once again, goes back to my whole thing about how Sega really should just give Sonic to the fans because Sega doesn't know what the hell they're doing with them. <laughs> yeah, his name isn't actually Fark, but that's kind of what it's got. <laughs> and thus, we begin the quest for a name. <laughs> yeah, so... As a catch-up, Spark is now rich because he saves the world. And uh, now we're just stuck with our little robot buddy. Trying to figure out what his life's purpose is now that it's kind of been swiped away from him. And he has no purpose or even a name. 
<laughs> Fark is, um... <laughs> it's just a portmanteau of Faker and Spark. <sighs> and that's why you're called Fark. But as goofy a name as that might be, it's your name. Be proud of it. All right. Except, now there's a dollar store Fark, and he just kidnapped the doctor that was about to uh, give us our name back. And that's our motivation. Let's figure out what the hell our name is. The game. So we gotta go to Fark school and learn how to Fark. Already know how to move and double jump. Although it's a problem when you don't have an R2, because that's the dash, which is kind of an important skill. But if you haven't figured this out yet, it's basically Sonic Adventure 2. The first game was Sonic Advance meets, like, Kirby. This is more Sonic Adventure 2 meets Devil May Cry. And that's why it's one of the best games. Okay, now we got the combat. Unfortunately, my controller is set up kind of weird, so my, my light attack and heavy attacks are actually swapped. It's going to take a second or two for me to really get used to it. Build up your meter, you get special attacks, you probably won't be seeing too many because spamming light attacks is really very effective. Also, there's parry. Parry's gonna be weird for me because the last time I played this was on the hardest setting. The parry is like, I think, three frames long on the hardest setting. This one, you can just hold it down. So, it's it's gonna be a little weird. Alright, so we got some power-ups around here. Ah, sword, okay. I grab the sword. So it's going to be useful for combat, because it does the most damage. Uh, I think there was another item around here. <laughs> Edgy. It makes a return from the previous game. Although you can't climb walls this time, but Fark should have been able to do that anyway. But Edgy's great, because it gives you two jumps and three dashes. Alright. i got to remember there's a lock on it. I don't really do combat with most things. I homing attack the things that die instantly to homing attacks. And, uh, that's kind of it. Oh, that reminds me. I have to modify one thing. Smooth turning. It's kind of a weird setting. That's about where I like it, I think. Because I remember one of my biggest issues with this game being that controls were a little fiddly. It, it's like it wrestles control away from you, but then, like, will just fling you off. And I think that has to do with the smart turning. Or smooth turning. So if you turn that down, or indeed even straight off, off, uh, I found that helps. Alright. Gotta love that double jump. And sometimes you just ping off in the opposite direction because you dash after an attack. Although there's like a weird speed up to that as well. It just depends on like exactly when you time your dash. If you, like, you dash the moment you homing attack into something, sometimes you just sort of slingshot off of it. Exactly like that. And if you're not aimed at directly upwards using a ramp like that, you go crazy fast. Other times it just pings you off in the opposite direction you came, but either way, it's, it's, it's fun. But the movement in this game just feels so good. Alright. Here we go. And I'm just going to fling myself over here because it's faster. And boom. There we go. There we go. Level one down. All right. That is really slow. The platinum medal for that's like 50 seconds. I think my record is like a minute two seconds or something like that. But either way, you know, this this is, again, just mostly a hardware test. But, you know, if, if it's something fun, let's do it like that. That's that's the awesome slingshot you can get, and that's me not doing that right. It's a useful skill to pick up if you're trying to go for, like, the speed medals. Because you need them to get, like, the ultimate unlocks in this game. here. I think the upside down head spin breakdancing kicks of 
edgy motor like a, a Metal Gear Rising reference. <laughs> Although like the, the shoes and the rest of the styles clearly shadow the hedgehog. Alright. Just boost downwards, boost across. Not get flattened by those blades. And boom. Double jump, charge through there. Uh. Alright. Grab some points, because we've got a score multiplier of 9. Actually, that's pretty intense. I don't normally have a huge score multiplier, but that's because I'm just running through the stages. This is kind of my anytime just play Steam games kind of game, you know? It's just fun to plomp down and play a level. Alright, uh, next is a boss fight, so I'm gonna have to swap sword. Playing a lot of the hardest mode, bosses teach you just to spam light attack with the sword. <laughs> a lot. But he's our villain, EJ. Also known as Dollar Store Fark. He's literally just a knockoff of Fark. Which is funny because that's Xeroxing a Xerox at this point. But, either way. Also, Freeom's back. So now we get to do our life purpose of killing him, too, so that's nice. Alright. So let's pick a fight with uh, basically the first boss to Sonic Adventure 2. <laughs> Regardless of which class you play. Harry. It's nice because I can just hold down parry now. I think you get a damage modifier with your combo as well. Also, the boss fights in this game have actually two themes, and it crossfades depending on how much damage you've done to the boss. It's pretty cool. I am surprised at how much health normal gives you. <laughs> but again, I played on the hardest setting, so... It's actually surprisingly easy. Although the bosses, regardless of which version, tend to be easy. Because again, you just spam the melee attack that works fast. And there's a platinum medal. And more plot! It's Return of our old pal Romolo. Although he's, uh... Less prone to japery this time around, which is kind of a shame. I liked how silly he was in the first one. Now he's just friendly. Oh yeah. We did kind of help Spark defeat Freom after we fought him in a fight about eight times. And collected some dolls in that one bonus level. But he's just a silly little guy. Seriously, this guy could be a mascot for the game in general. He's just adorable. All right. So tell me exactly what we got to do. So EJ, he's going to Technoria City, so that's where we're going next. Well, actually, we're not going to get there for a while, but either way, it's a location, so we're going to go there. Also, that level has awesome music. Give in general, it has really kicking music. All right. Here's Astra, the character I forget even exists most of the time. All right. Yeah, we really gotta get to Technoria. Wanna rock out to some jams. Although my TV's too low. Okay. Level three, Floria Highway. Oh, I love the big open roads of this area and like the hills. This, I feel like this game encompasses so much what the 2D Sonics were about in 3D. Like, I look at the stages like this, and this reminds me a lot of, like, um... What was it? Hilltop Zone from Sonic 2? Something just about, like, the, the sort of rustic countryside look of it. And then there's, like, a later level that I, I swear is, like, the most Sonic the Hedgehog ice level you will ever find. And yet, it's not an official Sonic game. 
Although I think that's a combat arena, and I don't want to go into those if I can help it, because that slows the game down. I think it was um, probably a wise decision that when they made the, the the choice to basically include all the levels from this game into the third one, uh, to cut out all the combat arenas, because those, those first combat areas are not fun. Like, I, I know it's somewhat of an antithetical statement to say, hey, there's all these enemies in a cool combat system, but like the best part is just kind of dashing past them and doing some environmental nonsense, but it really is better just to run around the environment. It, it just feels better. Which isn't to say the combat's not fun, by any means in measure, but I, I just like the movement. They got a nice sense of speed. The platforming's excellent. There's a reason why this series was my game of the year last year. It's it, it was very meaningful and just viscerally feels very very fun for me to play and it genuinely just makes me happy to play these games and you know any kind of game that elicits any sort of emotional response from me is a big deal because there's just so much that is not that <laughs> pop you pop you dash pop dash. It is shocking how much health this mode gives you. But I mean, I guess that's just an indictment of how uh, really fragile you are on the harder settings. Ah, oh, well, that's fun. Alright. Let's go. Wall jumping! No wall running in this game, though, well. No wall runnings as, as directed by the game. You can still kind of do it, but that's more because... The game likes to play with physics at times. I messed that up real bad. Ah. I got so many jumps with this form. How did I miss that wall jump? Okay, there we go. I just love these big, big, like, flippy roads. That just feels so sonic right there. I am slowing down. And I should not have done that. That's the way we came. I think that's the way we're going. think? Nope. <laughs> Wrong way. Fair enough. And this is why you don't stop upside down, people. Because you kind of just fall on your head. Unless you can really, really mess with physics. Which, fortunately, you can't in this game because here's a lot of fun physics tricks. And just jumping tricks and environmental stuff. Like, I haven't really shown anything off and I don't really intend to, but you know, the, the design mentality of this game is so fascinating. Like, Go back to the first level, it's a huge city, and you've got so many, like, buildings in the background, and each and every one of them has collision and stuff to do on them. <laughs> and it's like, no one would design that. Like, if this was a, like, AAA game, the, the first requirement would be take out all collision just so it saves memory. But no, <laughs> there's stuff here just for people who can get around that nonsense. Okay, so I gotta focus on this guy. I really gotta remember that that's there. I don't know what that move is. You can see that I do the combat challenges an awful lot. Oh well. I'm not here to actually play well. There we go. Combat slowing down! There we go. Woo. Also, there's no falling damage in this game. The sequel would rectify that and make it a lot more awkward, although there are levels dedicated purely because of that. I don't know how I feel about that, honestly. These guys are villains, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> I mean, he's a little tiny guy, so he shouldn't be a threat. But he's also playing on normal mode, which gives him a lot more health than even I expected, so... You know. He might be a lot more dangerous than he realizes what I'm saying. <sighs> but we're gonna have to fight these guys. Alright. So these guys are here to fight for the liberation of robots. This guy's just a dick. <laughs> I 
<laughs> we are not exactly intimidated by you. You silly knockoff of a knockoff. <laughs> Bonk. <laughs> this guy just... You know, he, he kind of gets made out to be like the main villain from the start, and he is just a whipping boy for everyone, <laughs> and it's hilarious. I like his design, though. The uh, fins on the side of his head are kind of cool. It's completely useless flare, but I kind of love it. So, stage four, Floria Plants. This level, I don't remember all that well. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of lava in this level, if I remember correctly. All right, cool, we're good. Airy for points. And then run to that guy just to lose it. Charge up to here. And off we go. Because you always need a lava level. I'm not sure if I like this better than the first game's lava level. Like, the first level's lava level is a little bit gimmicky, but they got a really jamming soundtrack. Alright. Harry. 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 Nope. Didn't do it there. Yeah, it's weird to me to just be able to hold down Parry. <laughs> I'm, I'm so used to it just being an instantaneous thing and just eating damage. And only having two health. I can play really recklessly. Alright. Harry? <laughs> it's kind of nice though. No pressure. Although that hubris is going to catch me off guard, I think. Alright. Woo! There we go. Ah, time to parry on there, wrong. Oh well. Parry practice. That's what this will be. Woo. Sphere walking. Because blocky environments are boring. <sighs> Time to parry wrong. See, that's the thing. You play on the hardest difficulty setting you learn how valuable, like, your basic attack is, and just how fragile you can be. Whereas in this, I, I'm out of practice, I get that, and I was never good to begin with, but <laughs> this is giving me a lot of opportunity to just fanny about. I'm kind of appreciating that, honestly. Okay. Parry. Parry. And there are a few places where you just absolutely have to parry to get through your environment. So when you have very, very minimal input time, you know, you get real good at it. Whoa. Lots of points here. Let's grab them. Alright. Run on the walls because physics. I, I do appreciate that they, they let you run on the walls and they kind of mess with the idea of what is up and what is down. There's an entire level dedicated to that later on. And it's one of the more awkward levels because it's entirely vertical, but I genuinely like it. I, I think it's one of the more interesting levels all the same. Alright, next we have Turbo Bird. I don't remember this boss at all. Good design, though. Can't say a lot of hard work wasn't put into this game. And that's why I love this series, you know? It's it's clearly a 
a work of passion that, you know, the legwork was put in to make something really, truly special. And it just resonated so much with me. Fight me. <laughs> Except not me. Fight some of the other guy. <laughs> That's a cool design. Alright, so as per fights, swap the sword and just kind of mash the hell out of it. Harry. Harry. Ah, <laughs> that one you gotta wait on. Although they did really rework the combat for the third game. Like, enemies react a little bit more and you can juggle. This game doesn't have that as much, really. New phase. Harry! Also, the music is just so killer. Barry! Oh, I got hit that time. You aren't gonna get another one of those off, though, my friend. Because you are about to die. There you go. That was a lot longer than it should have been, I think. But, it's another down fight. Alright. Eh, I got the gold medal. Not great, but it works. I'll take it. Alright, this is like the most sonic ice level I've ever seen. Like, seriously, if you took a Sonic level and put it into 3D and just made it a nice level, this would probably be it. You got non-Euclidean traps just floating in midair, platforms to jump on. Like, seriously, this game just gets what a Sonic level, can, like, um, composition should be. At least relative to, like, the, the 2D games. It just applies it to 3D and it works. Also, I should really be... The mode that gives me multiple jumps. Now, which way am I going? Uh, this way. And like the previous game, you know, it just... When you get a moment where you're not in a combat arena, which does happen, and you just get a moment where you can just become one with the game and react to the environment around you and just platform at full speed it just feels so good and like natural you know it, it just it's something you can sort of navigate on instinct and it just feels so excellent i screwed that up you know, i get two jumps three dashes plus a super dash and i still managed to cock things up like that <laughs> uh i'm gonna blame my wii u pro controller it's the triggers that aren't triggers. That's that's it. Let's let's say that's it. Suboptimal equipment. <laughs> Whoop, there we go. Okay. Woo. <laughs> Just completely stopped on a dime there. Okay, we're good. I get a little antsy around those ones that move horizontally across those tiny platforms. And now combat challenge! I think that's it. <laughs> combat challenge over. That was very slow. <laughs> And I died a lot. Like a total spaz. Alright. This is probably my favorite level. It has such a great soundtrack. Alright. 
our strategy. Fight them one on one, because clearly just dogpiling them wouldn't work. He's special. Oh, he's more powerful because he's awesome and yellow. And he has a goofy name. Hmm. Backstory for the villains. All right. I freaking love this level. It's just such a beautiful level. He's got so many neat ideas all sort of thrown in at once. Okay. Supercharge my speed. Alright, and I'm gonna skip the loop to loop. Cause it's slow. Woo! I could actually have just gotten out of here with my double jump, but I didn't. There it is. All right, more delicious points for the score machine. That's not the way, that's the way. Up, and ow, I charged him at exactly the wrong time. Ah, come on physics. I know we're not friends, but I kind of need you to be my friend right now. Alright, so down we go. Grab some more delicious points. That's the one. There it is. Here we go. Okay. Watch the big, flamey, scary faces. Teleport. And now the platform just sort of grows in front of us. Because stylish. Whoopsie. Again, gonna blame the Pro Controller. <laughs> It's, it's all the Wii U Pro Controller's fault. It's not designed to be used with the Steam Deck, but it kind of works. Down, down, down. Okay, stay out of the blue. Because going into blue is not ideal. Grab some free artwork. Bop. Woo! And we're not out of the blue yet. There we go. Pop you. Just avoid that blue because if you hit that, you go back to the start of the little teleporty area. So let's avoid that if we can help it. Grab some more points. Bury that. Right, there we go. That's handled. Bop, and bop, and I already used my second jump. I really need to be more present in that sense. I keep thinking I've got one more jump, but usually I don't. So I'm a little jump happy. All right. Carry that. Okay, we're good. We got this.
Again, Messum's physics, so we run on the walls, or what is effectively parallel to the floor. Or perpendicular, rather not. Not parallel. Parallel means the same way. Perpendicular means it crosses paths. I took basic geometry in grade 2. I should remember this stuff. Alright. Let's grab some delicious, delicious points. Woo! Bop. Okay. It's the next teleporter. Okay, I think we're getting pretty close to the end. Yeah, so this is why when they remade the levels for the third game, it kind of didn't work. Because that game's anti-falling damage. And like, yeah, you can survive it, but it kind of isn't how it was made to be. So it's a little awkward. Holy crap, I got a platinum medal on that for score. That's impressive. I don't think I've gotten the score medal on anything in this game. I don't tend to stand around and fight things, usually. Now, from what I remember, this is like the hardest fight in the game. This is basically how good old Romolo works. Just a bunch of nano-machine hologram projectors and nonsense. <laughs> you have friends! How can you have friends? You're a villain. Good lighting. Alright, so for some reason this boss has like a move that isn't telegraph- well it is telegraphed, but it's not telegraphed like that move right there. Because most moves in this game, you know, the enemy flashes, there's a sound effect, you know, to react to him. She has a move where she doesn't do that, she just flips her hair and you kind of have to be on top of that. Because if you're not, you can take a lot of damage. If you're playing on the hardest mode, that move right there, because it's a three hit combo. Hardest mode, you get two health, and the first attack hits so fast, and the second attack hits so late that you can actually get one shot by that move effectively. Also, there's a second form, and it kind of comes out of nowhere, and she goes nuts! And we don't want to run onto that, that little decal on the floor. So, we gotta be a little bit aware of our environment. Which isn't helpful when the camera decides to pan entirely upwards. But, the fight's like every other fight, basically. Just light attacks will do it. It's far from the best I've ever done that fight, though. I love these character designs. They're great. She might have killed me. And in fact, if I was playing a harder mode, she would have absolutely because I'm not good at that fight. She was a regular person! Kind of, sorta. Of. <laughs> Again, good lighting. Excellent scene composition. Gotta go find that doctor. Because again, this is the quest for figuring out our name. Because we're not happy about the goofy one we got. There 
go. Shantoria Town. Let's go. I don't remember much about this level. Oh, yeah, I know what this level is. Okay, cool. I played this a little bit while I was showing my brother this game. I'm going to swap to double jump mode because double jumps are good. Okay. And I'm going to go that way. Oh, almost got some parry points, but not quite. Alright. This color choice with the blue and yellow on the red backdrop like that. It looks nice. Although much of this game does. Bringing into justice with springs and justice. Oh, that is not where you jump. All right, got to go back a little ways, I guess. Can't be helped. Well, it could have been had I not been a spaz, but you know, I be what I am. Bop. And then dash over to here, dash over here, double jump here. And I can just jump up here. Okay, avoid those blades because those will hurt. They look pretty slow, but they will hurt you if you let them. So caution parries. Upside down right now. Gotta be careful about that. Constant situational awareness. It helps. Alright, there we go. Oop. The booster. And I dashed it the wrong time. And said so I was good at the game. I said I liked it. <laughs> Two very different things. Okay. So where are we exactly? Uh, okay, we were down there. So we gotta go this way. Got it. Got it. It's fine. So now we've got three different ways we could go around here. Just gonna take the upper route. Carry right through that. And it looks like we're okay. All right. And when this game gets going, it gets going. It just feels really nice to play. I'm so thoroughly impressed with this series. And I'm proud to say this was my game of the year last year. It's just so good. And fling ourselves off into space because we can. That was a horrible... Horrible time. Alright. Technoria City. One of the best soundtracks in the game, I think. And just a really cool looking area. It's clarity. This is Well, she's something, all right. She'll be back in the next game. But she's important. All right. This level's freaking cool. feels like such an awesome stage to be in. The lighting is perfect. The stage flow is awesome. This game just gets it. Alright. I get 
twisty areas. This reminds me a lot of... of um, Stardust Speedway. Including the fact that it's the best song in the game. As we all know, Stardust Speedway, Bad Future equals awesome. <sighs> Screw that up. Oh well. There's always a different way to get where you need to go in these games. Just gotta find it. And I wanna go up there. I've decided. Okay. Alright, now I know where I am. We're good. Okay. Bring ourselves over here, here, pop off that, pop off that, dash. Like the sound cut out of it for a sec. Not sure what that's all about. I noticed that about the Steam Deck, it, it happened once before when I was testing something. The sound just cuts out through HDMI and I'm not sure what that is. So there's gonna have to be some more testing. But, you know, that's the whole point of all this. Test stuff, dial it in. Get it to work better and better. All right. I love that level. That level is so beautiful. All right. Not my best time, but, you know. And this fight. Show how much of a mook this guy actually was. Because he's kind of a mook. <laughs> Inside your butt. That's peak writing right there. Let's fight this knockoff of a knockoff. Very. A lot of the bosses in this game can just be handled by being aggressive. That move, I'm not sure you can, but you can kind of just parry through anything. Just spam attacks and it works well enough. for that move, apparently. Hmm, interesting. Block. Wow, oh, I'm actually doing badly at this fight. I shouldn't say I've been doing good at much of anything in this game, but, you know. Oh, God. And I think I'm dead. <laughs> wow. After all my shit talking to this guy and I lost. That is... That is so perfectly life, isn't it? <laughs> That's fine. Okay, don't want to go in there. Block that. I'm going to pull a second move. Block that. Or try to. Then he gets knocked on his butt. Very. Stay out of there. There we go. Man, that's no excuse for how bad I did that first time. That is embarrassing. I like that he has the edgy shoes. Just to hammer home the point.
Hey, what's up, yo? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Oh, I wanted to do that. Uh-oh. It's this guy again. I'm all the way at the end of the first game. This new body that's somewhat like my old one. He's number one. Or number two. <laughs> and we were made by this guy. Which is interesting. What with us being made to kill him. Well, this furthers some existential crises. I can't imagine why they would care. Just wanted his name, man. And now we have a sort of Rise of the Robots esque subplot here. Go. Back to back boss fights, go! Ah. It's the ones that you have to wait for that always get me. It's because I'm not a patient person. Carry through that. <laughs> Try to, anyway. If I remember correctly. Yeah, he pulls one extra move out of his his butt. Which on the harder settings really sucks if you're not prepared for it. And again, the, the limited timing for parries <laughs> certainly makes it a challenge. Well, it turns out his big fancy body was actually a bit of a puppet. But I mean, the robots, so I guess they're all kind of like that. Right, stage nine, Terminal Dragon. This is a weird stage in the remake. The remake, the, the third game that brings all the levels from this game into it as bonus stuff. Mainly because it ends in a boss fight and they cut all the combat challenges out, so it just sort of stops. Hey, got some art, nice. I tried to parry that, it didn't work so well. I don't know. 
can also take those boosters just to get by super fast. Or we can play the physics nonsense. The physics nonsense could be fun. Okay, there we go. Ah! <laughs> I parried at exactly the wrong time. Someone who has basically unlimited time to parry now, I really should be better at it. <laughs> Take another swing at this. Okay. Carry that. Go up here. Charge and go up here. There's a little bit of a cooldown on the back end. You can't quite spam it or anything. It's still really generous on this mode. Doesn't make me less awful, but, you know, it helps. Physics-y nonsense! Now you're running on the ceiling. There we go. Whoa. And there's the titular terminal dragon. This was cut from the third game. To be fair, it's a little hard to tell what's going on with it sometimes. But it's like any other boss fight in this game, really. Just get the parry timing down. And use the sword, and you're good. <sighs> I think you did. <laughs> it's good to see you. Good timing, too. Because I know how much of a fan you are of, of Spark as well. I just wanted to test out my Steam Deck. See how it would work. If I was going to play a game, it had to be Spark too. I thought I'm doing the best showing of it, though. Okay. Let's avoid getting hit by a train if we can help it. Okay, so we definitely don't want to get hit by that. <laughs> exactly like that. Ugh. I am sorry, Fark. You are going to have to get some dings out of your chassis. Perry. Perry. <laughs> Skip some art because I just want the parry points. I've earned them. Oh, we got some art anyway. Nice. Okay. I got hit and parried at that time. Well done, me. Whoop. Okay, this is the part where things get a little weird with the directions and stuff. I think, whoop. It's fine, it's fine, we're good. Okay. Because if I remember correctly, there's a path here that you have to jump because you're stuck on a... Yeah, right there. You gotta jump there because you're permanently stuck on this weird loop thing of a bob, and now I've lost all momentum, so keeping a straight line's a little tricky. There we go. Alright. Boom! <laughs> Definitely exploration is great in this game. Um, the first time I played this, I played it on the hardest difficulty, so I got really good at like the parry game and stuff. But uh, mainly, I'm just trying to go through all the all the um, 
medals at this point, but some of the stuff is really, really hard to get medals on. Like, the, the first level's time medal is ridiculous. But what's really cool about it, I found, at least from the routing I've been looking at and testing some stuff out on, um, in order to beat the time medal for, like, the first level, you have to go and, like, fling yourself onto, like, a building way off in the distance that shouldn't have any physics. <laughs> and there's, like, collectibles and stuff out there, so they really did work on, like, allowing you to explore all these really bizarre, out-of-the-way nooks and crannies in the game. Basically, if you can see it, you can probably get there, and there's probably something there for you. Okay, these are speed boosters. We need to hit them, or we're gonna fall straight down. Bounce there. Whoop me. There we go. Go, 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 go. This level's a bit tricky because it's entirely vertical, and if you go slow, you can fall all the way back to the start, and I've done that so many times. Okay. Trampolines. Whoop. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Fling myself over there. Thank you, edgy mode. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm playing Steam Deck with a controller. My trick was getting, like, a controller to actually work with it. Like, the first controller I used, ironically, also had an R2 issue. Because, like, I could connect a DualShock 4 to it and it worked perfectly fine, but I had no R2. Which, especially in this game, is rather hard because that's your dash. But I tried playing that on a different game and it worked there. And then I played Stardew Valley and it didn't work there. So I'm not sure what to make of that. Uh, then I tried to connect two separate Xbox One controllers to it. That didn't work. Um, so now I'm using a Wii U Pro controller, and aside from the fact that the triggers aren't actually triggers, they're buttons, so that might be a problem for FPS, as it seems to be working pretty well. And since I... <laughs> early goal. Whoops. I think you can leave there early, but <laughs> there's, there's a goal at the top of the tower. I didn't plan on doing that, but there we go. I wanted to do the whole level. Oh well, let's fight Flint. <sighs> Such a cool character. I love Fark's design, he's great. Oh yeah, I did kind of murder Float, sort of. It's weird she's back in the next game. That's good advice. Don't trust Clarity. <laughs> that will be especially relevant in the third game. Parry that, parry that. This is so much easier now that I have more than a couple frames to parry. Doesn't make me any better at it. Oh yeah, he just teleports around now. Parry. he goes. He'll be back. Yeah, see, I, I don't actually care to play it in handheld mode. I, I don't care to play my Wii or my Switch in handheld mode either. I I put it on my TV because I think that looks best. The, the fact is, specifically because I wanted to stream this was part of the reason why I wanted a Steam Deck in the first place. I tried streaming Spark 3 and it worked. But it looked horribly artifacted, and I'm hoping this at least looks kind of good. I'm recording it on the back end for a review down the line, so it should at least look good there, but... I know that my computer's not very good, and streaming at the same time while running a PC game 
pretty much takes up all its RAM, so it's it's not great. So I, I think that combined with the fact that it allows me to play PC games without having to deal with a mouse and keyboard, although I could connect one, I suppose, but that's kind of against the whole point, should make me actually enjoy PC gaming more, because I, I'm not a PC gamer, not natively, and I... I cannot stand the mouse and keyboard nonsense. My hands don't work very well, so keyboards in general are very hard for me. But if I can plop a controller on something, it tends to work a lot better for me. So I'm, I'm hoping that not only will this look better with my computer's current specs and stuff, because it won't have to, you know, dedicate the RAM to rendering this while, while streaming it, uh, it should allow me to actually play games a lot better, at least in theory. But it was a lot of money to buy a Steam Deck. But it was on sale for the first time that it had ever been on sale. So I just decided, you know what? I got a tax return. Screw it. Let's put some money towards that. And maybe that'll... Whoopsie! That's bad. Oh! Ah. Huh. I was wondering how long that was going to take. Cyber Shadow. That's that's one of those Ninja Gaiden style games, isn't it? I, I think I've seen one or two or three of them that look really, really cool. That might have been one of them. Yeah, my Switch has pretty bad drift as well. Um, I would suggest you try and get the 8-bit DO um, Pro Controller. It's kind of built a little bit like a Super Nintendo controller, but with, with uh, two extra sticks, so it can actually play modern games and stuff, and it's just ridiculously well built. I don't know where I am or what physics is happening right now. Also, we're supposed to be on the stripe that's around the planet, so I'm not sure what the planet down there and its stripe are doing, but uh, we're on an adventure now because uh, this level's a bit weird with its physics and I've messed it up pretty badly. There we go. Back on course. I think we're supposed to be going the opposite way because the arrow on the... The ground is pointing backwards. This level's a bit weird. Still, I think we're okay. Uh, so again, I'm not sure what happened there. <laughs> Physics. <laughs> it's it's more a, a art form than a science, I guess. There we go. I like that this level actually lets you run around on the, the planetary stripe. Because, you know, what is that? Why is that there? I want to know about this thing. It's a weird piece of the world building that's sort of left out of the first game, and I want to know about it. And aside from the fact that it's still on the planet and in the background in this stage, apparently we're on it. Ah, oh, man, I love this game. This game just makes me genuinely happy. And for someone who doesn't really have much emotion, <laughs> something that can make me feel genuinely, deeply, viscerally happy is is very special you know that that was one of the things i i probably should have said during my game of the year list like look i it all comes down to this made me feel good and i i don't know how to better describe a feeling but this this really genuinely did make me deeply feel good about myself enjoying these games because sonic adventure 2 is one of my favorite games of all time and to have a, a basically a version of it that's been made by one person I think that's the way we're going. You know, and it'd be good and in a bundle that's really, really cheap. Like, yeah, obviously I want to play it. And it's it's great. Whoa, okay. I really should just stick to either platforming or reading chat or not trying to do both. Okay. <laughs> that's the problem. That's That's me trying to communicate to people while platforming on a platform with very hinky physics, but it's fine, it's fine, we'll be okay. There we go. There we go. Well, that's the thing.
You can already play your your PS5 and PS4 remotely if you have an Android phone. Like, I've done that with my Odin. Yeah, Cyber Shadow. Like, I, I would say that sounds... I, I'm immediately... I'm, I'm sure I played, like, that on Game Pass for about five minutes and it looked really good. But I immediately get that confused with, like, Katana Zero and The Messenger. <laughs> Those are all games I really ought to actually play and get, but... Uh. All right, let's go. Oh, these games are all great. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> First natural reaction when I see a jump is to jump, and it's this is one of those just let the physics fling you a little bit. There we go. There we go. Okay, we're good. We're back on track. The third one's a really good game. I, I think it's great and it does have the entirety of the second game in it minus the boss fights and the story but i think my issues with the third game come twofold first in the form that's i don't like that they got rid of the power-ups like there's one and there's like an entire store dedicated to power-ups but there's really only one power-up and different characters play that kind of constitute power-ups but not quite the same and that bugs me because I, I do like the power-ups. I, I get why they did that, but I don't really like it all the same. Uh, the other problem I have with the third game is... Uh, gosh, there. Uh, let's see. Uh, fall damage. <laughs> they, they added a fall damage mechanic, which when you pair it with some of the stages in this game in there, they don't flat out work because this game didn't have fall damage in it. And while they do have some levels that are dedicated purely to the fall damage mechanic, it's just, I don't enjoy it. But I will say that the third game is still probably, like, the best built out of the three. But I think that this game, for me, is probably more mechanically fun than the third game. But they're both really, really good games. I like the entire series. It's great. All right. I'm really hoping this actually looks good on the back end, because I know the last time I tried to do Spark and stream it, it didn't look all that great. But I'm recording this manually, so it should at least look okay, provided I don't run out of hard drive space. Which is certainly a very real possibility, given that I burn through about 10 gigs every 5 minutes. Okay, and parry. Harry. Oh, don't want to go on there. Up here, dash, and jump. Now, fortunately, this does not have the aggressive flashing of Mega Wrath from the first game. Uh, there is aggressive flashing, I think, in the last fight and with double, but we've already dealt with that. This area's got very heavy gravity, which is why my jumps aren't really working. Oh, there we go. And no, 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 parry! Alright, we're good. Alright, we're good. We're good. I'm gonna pretend we're good. Okay, this room really messed me up the first time I ever played this game. Because it's kind of vertically built, and, you know, like, like the tower level. If you fall, you can really mess yourself up. Parry there, parry there, because there's an explosion, parry there, because there's fire. Fire kind of looks like a Lego fire. A little bit. Parry there. Whoa. It's really shocking how much health this game lets you have on normal. It's totally different from the hard mode. Okay, here's where things get a little bit hinky. Okay, I think we're okay. Go, 
gonna want to wait here. I think you can parry through this, although I've never tried. Go, go, go. Yep, you can parry through it. <laughs> Take that, giant cannon. Whoopsie, that's not what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do. Alright, we're good. I gotta avoid the whole thing exploding. Crap. I don't know if you can actually, like, wait for this to explode and see what happens. I've never bothered trying. I just know whenever I see any sort of time limit on me, I want to not be there. Perry. Okay, there we go. And there's the exit. Huh, Vengeful Guardian Moonrider. I'm gonna have to try that out, because I, I do like the Shinobi games a lot. Those games do sound very, very good. Um, well, I've heard that there's not gonna be a fourth one for a while. I've, I've heard that uh, the developer wants to go and try and make some different games that aren't necessarily Spark games, but I hope there is a fourth game. It'd be interesting to see where the series goes after the story in the third one, because it ends kind of weird, but... Also, EJ's missing a hand now. Dude, Shinobi meets Mega Man. I'll play that. <laughs> oh, it's good to hear this looks great, because... <laughs> You know, I I did a video on Spark 3, and that was just my stream footage, and it looked so bloody pixelated and bad, and I was embarrassed about it. Also, now we get to learn that the Edgelord, as much as he is basically a knockoff of Fark, has about a million one more knockoffs. Because he was a bad clone that has a million one bad clones of himself. Yeah. I'm definitely going to have to look up Guardian Moonrider. That looks and sounds really cool. That sounds like the kind of game I would absolutely play. Don't trust clarity. That's the first thing we learned. <laughs> I don't remember this fight at all, to be honest. So this one's coming out of nowhere for me. I'm pretty sure my strategy of parry through and standard attack everything is going to be fine, though. She gets bigger knives now. I'm guessing we don't want to stand there. <laughs> I don't remember this fight at all. <laughs> Once again, awesome vocal tracks. Uh. Hey, Platinum Metal. Not bad, not bad. Rumble is a lot more serious in this game and a lot less silly. Yeah, well, it's it's just this one. The third game doesn't, which is kind of weird because it really does sort of hammer home that it's uh, <laughs> desperately trying to harken back to like the Sonic Adventure games. And it definitely 
meshes a lot better with Spark's more hard rock version of, like, Spark's theme. Dude, City Escape's awesome. <laughs> Uh, poor little Romolo. He needs to go back and pretend he steals everyone's wallets again. <laughs> uh, poor little Romolo. Alright, Apocalypse Thruster, final stage. And then a final boss after this. Honestly, I thought this would take longer than it did. But I also did expect to have as much health as, as this version gives us. <laughs> Alright. Woo! Okay. Whoa! Yeah, see, this is where the smooth turning gets a little weird. I think this is where it helps to have it on. Because there are some parts that like feel absolutely unplayable with it, and some parts that absolutely require it. And I think this is one of the areas where the smoother turning, which keeps you on the tracks during the loops, really helps. Unfortunately, it kind of messes with my ability to control everywhere else, so... We're going to try our best to stay out of anywhere that needs it. But again, if we really wanted to play this game, we could just fling ourselves to pretty much anywhere in the environment, and there will be collision there. Okay, so where am I? Uh, I? I see. It spawned me kind of sideways facing. It's done that twice now. I might just have to turn on smooth turning, but I don't like it. I don't really want to. If I can avoid doing that, I would very much prefer it. But I didn't want to be on this track. Okay, well, let's see what we can do with it. Good save, good save. Alright. I just want to not die right now, thank you. Alright, checkpoint. Oh! Yeah, those kind of push you, so you gotta be kind of aware of that. Harry. Dash, dash. Jump, dash. And fling ourselves. I want to be on that track. Well, I'm not on it now. Alright. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Okay. Yep, this is fine. Let's go explore a little bit. Here's a hammer. Don't want the hammer, though. You really only need the sword and edgy. And to be fair, that's exactly why the third one doesn't really have power-ups. Because uh, the developer found it really hard to sort of create meaningful power-ups that would create a varied experience. And in, in this game, it, it definitely feels that way. Because again, you can kind of just make it through with one ability for speed, one ability for combat, and that's it. Okay, this room kind of sucks. There's a few areas like that that are just straight upwards. And they're fine unless you slow down even a little, then you're kind of screwed. <laughs> Alright. Alright, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Gotta stay on that track. Yeah, controls are a little bit touchy when you turn off smooth steering, but it helps in the main areas. Go over here. It's okay. We're okay. Just gonna avoid all this ordinance. Oh, yeah. It's okay. We're good. We're good. All right. Yep. Carry through that. Carry through that. Oh, got caught on the back end though. All right. Jump and dash and dash and get hit by the explosion. Here we go again. Entirely vertical. Don't stop. Don't ever stop. If you stop, that's where there's problems. And this 
is exactly when that happens to me. I have a lot of trouble with these rooms. Ah, uh, poop. <laughs> Those things will still have physics on you and make you go that way, even though you're <laughs> not going that way. Yeah, see, this this is where I have trouble. Just gonna keep dashing and hope it works. Okay, so this is the last room. It's kind of scary, because if you step out of line or you jump, you will take a crap ton of damage. So you want to not do that, if you can help it, because you can't really parry your way out of it. Okay, 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 oh god! <laughs> yeah, that might have been a third of my health right there, <laughs> in about two seconds. This area's a bit dangerous. Great shot, there's the goal. And I died, but I made it to the goal, so it sh should be okay. There we go. Whew. Really? I've never heard of this Sonic Sessions thing. <laughs> if you got links to videos or something of them, I would love to see them, because that sounds awesome. Alright, final fight. Yeah, there's a lot of power-ups in the first one. Um, I mean, if you're still playing it, I would tell you Knight is the good one. I, I tend to say that you need one for, for combat, one for environments. My combat one in the first one is Knight because it gives you a shield if you build up your combo. And then my environment one is usually Air because you can get like a triple jump off of it. But yeah, I can see why you get overwhelmed in the first one. But I like the amount of choice. It lets you have a ton of different options. So Clarity turns out to be an AI. But she wanted to basically kill everything. And that's kind of what happened in the first game. So now he wants to destroy the world. So that's a great shot of Freon. He just wants to be a happy robot. Oh, cool. I will take a look at that. Thank you. All right, here we go. Final boss time. Yep, don't want to get hit by that, but we did. This guy's not great for photosensitivity. That's one of the issues I've had with these games, is pretty much each and every one of them has something that sucks for photosensitive people like me. on this guy. Yeah, 
And for some reason, the Steam Deck's audio cutting out again, because it does that. Phew. <laughs> Hey, you got a platinum medal for speed. Nice. It's that robot that uh, Spark was friends with for about 10 seconds before Freon killed it in the first game. As it turns out, it was him all along. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. That's happened three times in the past two hours. I'm not sure what that's about. I'm going to have to take a look at that, certainly. Fortunately, it seems to come back pretty quick. Unfortunately, Freon can't create a duplicate of himself. He just sort of makes puppets. And that's why he created Fark to kill him, to kind of become him afterwards. This game has a really deep plot when you actually think about it. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> That's impossible! Bonk. And now shit's getting real. Final boss. The actual final boss this time. I want an action figure of this right now. Seriously, super far needs to have an action figure because it's amazing. Also, we're now in a Dragon Ball fight. <laughs> this is interesting because it's a fight you can't actually lose. Like, if you just run out of health, you restart every phase of this fight. Because he wants you to beat him. That's the whole point. <laughs> Also, the soundtrack to this game is amazing, if I haven't pointed that out yet. God, I need an action figure of Fark right now. He is so cool. <laughs> but it's really just more spam. All the light attacks ever, and you're fine. game series is so special. Freaking love it. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <sighs> I am so bad at the delayed attacks. If it's just flash and react, I'm good at it. It's the ones I have to wait on that I'm bad at. Ah, crap. Yeah, I lost that one. So I get bonked and I gotta do it again. But it's fine. This basically ends like a Persona fight. It's kind of basically entirely scripted. But it does make it feel really cool. Get back here. So bad at the delayed attacks. <laughs> I've got Ghostwire Tokyo. I've never actually bothered playing it though. Mainly because I'm a total wimp when it comes to horror. 
Even though I don't think it's really all that much of a horror game. I just need to learn to completely forget everything I learned in the hard mode and just hold down the parry button. Because I can do that, and then it just handles all the delayed attacks. Ah, come on. This game is so cool. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> that might be a little less survivable. <laughs> does end like a, a Dragon Ball <laughs> game. The next one basically ends like Evangelion of all things. <laughs> I think uh, that bird might be a bit of an anime fan. God, that is such a cool design. Seriously, I need an action figure of Fark this moment because he is so friggin' cool. The sad thing is you can get this as a form in this game, but you have to like get all the platinum medals and it's unbelievably hard to do so. <laughs> now you can follow my footsteps. Nope. <laughs> the boss was basically designed after Cell and Frieza combined, as I understand it. Oh, man, I love this game. This is easily one of the best games I played last year. One of the best games I played this year. Also, the Doctor's alive. So it turns out that was a bit of a lie. <laughs> I didn't mean it. And that leads into the plot of the third game. Where you don't get to play as Fark, which sucks because he's best character. And I friggin' love him. Oh, man. I love this game. You can see all the mooks I mostly ignored. Because <laughs> it's just more fun for me to run past all of them. Also some awesome jams. You can see that a lot of effort and heart was put into this game, and it completely resonates with me. It's just so good. Yeah, it, it does feel a little like Paper Mario-ish, you know, up on a stage and stuff. I don't even remember this enemy. <laughs> Hey, it's those bosses what I killed that one time. One of which is the first boss to Sonic Adventure 2. Nice dance moves. There's a neat little moment in Spark 3 that I noticed, like, my fourth or fifth time playing it, where you have to fight most of the bosses in this game again as like an amalgam fight against Spark, but because Spark has no idea who any of these people are, it's all question marks, except for EJ, which 
because he looks kind of like Fark, it's actually labeled Fark question mark. And I thought that was just such a cute little feature. It's like, oh, that's a neat little touch that I'm not sure any people would notice, but I did. It made me happy. There's Super Fark, which needs an action figure, and I will buy 12 of them because, oh my god, that is such a cool design. And Fark. He gives a little bow. This is such an adorable little game. I love this game so much. <laughs> game made by one person. Because, god damn it. How many people work on Sega's Sonic games? With how much money again? Because give one guy unity and he does a much better job.